Hey guys, welcome to Webtrix Home. In this video, we'll talk about the Photoshop basics. We'll go through the Photoshop interface and the options it offers. Stop if you're going to close this video because there might be a lot of options that you may not have gone through. So let's start with the basics. So whenever you open Photoshop application, you'll see this interface on your computer. On the top, you'll see main menus to open and close the file, to edit the file, to go step forward, step backward, and then the, the window thing that allows you to see a couple of options or hide a couple of options from the interface and the online help center. So right below the main menu options, there's an option bar, and this basically aims to provide you more control while working with any of your tools. And you can see this option bar changing with each option the tools you use in Photoshop. So this is the tools bar that you are going to use while working with Photoshop. While on the right hand side you can see the layers panel that displays files being loaded on the Photoshop document. And then you have got a couple of options over here to modify your images. And on top of this panel you can see a couple of workspaces. This can control which options appear on this right hand side panel. This is the essentials, the basics of Photoshop, but you can also go with Neon CS6. These are the options that CS6 provides. Moreover, you can also go with paintings option and you can see the layers panel along with the brush panel and the color swatches. And here's the navigator. And then the photography options provides you with adjustment layers that plays with the brightness, control, and color balance of photos. Then you have got typography that provides you more control while typing anything on your document. So you can also reset the active workspace. And then you can also create your own workspace and drag panels over here right or delete any workspace you don't want to appear in the drop down so let's get back to essentials over here and see the main menus here first option is file menu and as you can see with any of your computer applications here's an option to create a new file and this will provide you with a dialog box which will talk at the latter part of this video then you have got open option and it allows you to open photoshop files or other image files that photoshop supports from your computer so just click on any of the photos and click open and you can see the photo loaded over here and on the right hand side in the layers panel you can also see a layer created and named background with a lock icon so we'll talk about what this actually means in other videos we can also open any image and force up just opening your file explorer going to the location of the file and selecting any image you want either right click and select open with photoshop or click and drag it over here and leads it not in the workspace but on top of the workspace and the tab line and you can see two different documents open in photoshop after that this is the browsing breeze and this is basically another application a stand application for photoshop that helps you share files and computer view the files here's the details Here's the sorting options over here, filtering options, right? And here's the thumbnail options. And then you can also define how you want your documents to appear over here, right? You can use firm strip. You can also see the metadata. You can also see it tile wise, right? And you can also see define output over here. And on top, you can also see a couple of options like rotate, then the same output options so output to web or pdf all right that's the same option over here that allows you to create a new file and then you have got refine option now you can also play with images over here a couple of options over here you can zoom in the images you can also create a new collection over here i'm just closing this one Written to Adobe Photoshop, I can go to recent folder. Here's another important option over here. That's the open photo in camera raw. And this allows you to redefine the exposure, color and brightness, whatever things you can work with in Photoshop. So you can define the color balance, brightness and curves, uh, even noise reduction, hue saturation levels, and stonings, and much more over here. So I'm just closing this one. So I'm going back to Shunchills. I simply click on a photo and open it in Photoshop. So the next option over here is browsing mini breeze and basically it opens up a mini breeze panel and a Photoshop interface from where you can browse and load photos to Photoshop. Then you have got open ads and what it basically does is allows you to open Photoshop document at Photoshop. Then you have got open as smart object and what it basically does is opens 
any document that for suppose as a smart object and the difference is you can see here an additional icon on the thumbnail bottom right corner of the thumbnail right and if you see here on other images there's no thumbnail as such so what's the difference over here is basically smart objects are vector graphics and these objects do not lose its image details even while resizing while with normal objects raster objects or raster graphics unlock this one that's it now and resize it and then go back to resize it again to its basic size and you can see the image is being pixelated All right let's get it back to its original state and let's close the breeze then you've got open recent option and that basically helps you to see the last 10 documents open in photoshop you can clear the list from here or you can even load the recent files from here so with the close option you can basically close the active photoshop document while close all option allows you to close all the documents open in this application a close and go to breeze will help you will allow you to close the active document and go to the adobe breeze then you have got the save option and that will help you that will allow you to save document as a pst or any other file formats but one thing you need to keep in mind is if you're working on a for sub document let's say let's open a for sub document here so if you're working on a for sub document and you make some changes let's say this is a little bit of change over here and then try to save it it doesn't allow you to select the file format because basically for sub assumes you are trying to save it as a photoshop document and in other cases when your object is not a photoshop document but something else then it allows you to save it as any file format right so with save we can do the same thing achieve the same thing with save as and save as always allows us to select the file format and save a copy of the document in another file format then you have got save for web another saving option but this allows you to redefine the image quality and define the file format as well a couple of file formats are available here and this basically optimizes the image to use in web pages and this also reduces the file size to help the web page load faster then you have got the revert option this allows you to revert your file to the state when it was saved last time or if you haven't saved then you can get in the state how it was when you opened it all right then you have got place option and this basically allows you to add one image on top of the document existing document and this will add the document as a smart object here as well so you can see the thumbnail icon over here you can also place any image by simply clicking and dragging it and releasing it on the workspace inside this document area and this will also work the same way and you can see with each of the object added on a document multiple layers multiple file thumbnails appearing over here with the file name and the little thumbnail over here you can define the size of the thumbnail from here right you can even up to display or hide documents from here with another option we have got to import and this allows you to import video frames to layers right and you can easily create gifs from videos using this option this will ask you to choose video range for the image or even convert the entire video into frames right and then you can work with frames here but for a while and you can see a couple of layers are created from the video I selected let's close this one as of now so likewise you can also import for some notes using this option and we'll talk about for some notes in the latter videos then you have got WIA support and this allows you to connect your computer with digital cameras and import photos directly from there so with export option you can see an option to export paths to illustrator which is another Adobe application that works with graphic artworks then you have got another option to render video which will help you to create videos from photos of documents 
then you have got Jumify and this basically resizes and generates optimized images to use in web pages. Then you have got automate option over here and these are the options that you can ask for us up to carry out automatically to a group of files together and here you can see this dialog box where you can select the action these are the default action for sub offers like converting rgb images to grayscales or uh, even saving as pdf gradient map or uh, other setups and then define the source image from where you, you want the image to be used as sources and then define the destination folder where you want your outputs to be stored and then just hit an ok and this will automate the process then here's pdf presentation option to create pdf from active files or selected files right then you have got create droplet which is basically a sequence of person action saved outside of photoshop which you can use later to automate the process and then you have got crop and straighten photos that allow you to crop and straighten a batch of files then you have got contact sheet and this is basically an automatic process of creating a file that contains thumbnails of all the images present in defined location in a computer then you have got conditional mode change and so you can change the color mode from rgb to cmyk cmyk to lab color whatever you want then you have got fit image that allows you to resize images it's a dialog box where you can define the size you want then you have got lens correction option and this allows you to use some default correction options available here in Photoshop to a batch of files and then you can play with the geometric distortion chromatic aversion vignette and even auto scale you can even define the edge transparency here then you have got the most to SGR Pro and this basically allows you to create a composite image from a set of images from a defined directory of a computer. And the last option in automate is the photo merge and this basically allows you to merge multiple files from a defined destination and define the layout from here and get them merged. Okay. Then you have got scripts over here and these are also automation processes. The first one is image processor that allows you to choose the action you want to perform just like automation and then select the processing option and run it through a batch of files. Then you have got a quick option to delete all entry layers or flatten all layer effects. We'll talk about layer effects later and layer mask as well. And then here are a couple of other options. Then you have got the file info option and then the print option and exit option over here. Then let's go to the edit option and you can see here are a couple of step backward forward option. And you can see here control Z allows you to either redo or undo the last action. If you want to go multiple steps backwards, you need to hit Alt Control Z. And if you want to go multiple steps forward, you need to hit Shift Control Z. Then you have a couple of options that you learn with time and force up, right? But here are a couple of settings that you can learn at the beginning. So here's the purge, it will allow you to remove all force of cast from your computer. Then you have got PDF presets that basically allows you to define the quality of the PDF documents you want to cr create using Photoshop. Then you have got presets, a bit of preset managers. We'll talk about the Photoshop presets up to later in other videos. Then you have got the remote connection options that allows you to connect remotely to another computer and work on Photoshop from there. Then you can see the color settings. So you have a couple of color options over here, but we haven't talked about color spaces or color settings as of now. Then you have got a sign profile and that will allow you to define the color profile and basically these are the color profiles and that defines how your computer displays color information and the most used color profiles are adobe rgb and srgb adobe rgb is a color space developed by adobe systems and it includes all the colors that are achievable on printers but these colors are created using three colors red green and blue as primary colors while the colors used on printers are cmyk that's cyan magenta yellow black as the primary colors and srgb is another color developed by microsoft and it serves as the best guess for how another person's monitor produces colors and srgb is the standard color space for displaying images on internet so you can assign the profile whatever profile you want over here then you can also convert profiles right from one profile to another so this might be working cmyk uh, this can be 
any other colors from the source and basically the one we generally convert is srgb and rgb well you can also convert rgb into cmyk or cmyk into rgb here's the keyboard shortcuts for the application menus you can see the menus options over here keyboard shortcuts and you can even change the shortcuts from here and change it to something else so you can change the shortcut keys from here, hot keys from here, but it will create confusion later while working on other devices. So I suggest you not to do this. I'll just undo it. And you can also see panel options here. And you can simply add shortcuts for panel menus as well. And you can also add shortcuts. Um, basically, there are a lot of shortcuts for all these things already defined. So you can add shortcuts for things you don't find. So you can also go with the menus, application menus and define if you don't want any of the options to appear on your main menu options right and you can also define the color from here that's basically not needed though then you can see the shortcut for menus that we just did right here and then you have got the preferences and this one's the settings for photoshop here you can see a lot of options let's go one by one so general the first option here and this allows you to choose the color picker the size of the hue color picker and then the default interpolation option that's the image resizing option and then a couple of other options over here then you have got the interface options for the color theme the standard screen mode and a couple of more options and here's this language and the font size option as well then you have got file handling option image previews file extension and location to save automatic saving recovery then you have got camera raw preferences then you have got performance where you can see the available ram on your computer and the ideal range of ram that you can allow for us to use you can enter the value over here so you can increase it from here and decrease it from here and then you have got the scratch sticks option for us cast which you want to use basically that should be the one with the highest free space then here's the tile size and here's the three states that tells you how many steps you can go back while working with photoshop the default value is 20 you can add any value over here but the higher the number of history states you define here the slower the application will be so the cast labels and the cast tile size defined here then if you have graphic processor it will allow you to select the graphic processor and then a couple of more settings over here then with cursors, you can define the cursors, how you want your cursors to appear, and the brush preview, color, and you can set the color from here for brush preview. Then you have the transparency option, and the grid color, and the grid size. You can define the grid size over here for transparent documents over here, or you can also opt for none. That will display white space on your document area and that might be confusing so you can add grids over here then the gamut warning and the color for the warning and then you have got the unit which units you want to use for rulers measurement unit and measurement units for text then the column size then the default resolution for print or for digital images then here's the point picker size and then you have got the color selection option for guides smart guides grids and slices this allows you to define colors for the smart guides on your application and here's also your option for a grid line the number of grid lines you want on your document and the subdivisions for the grid line then if you have additional plugins you can define from here and you have also got option to show all filter galleries and names and filter menu you can hide it or display it from here and here's extensive panel you can download and use extensive panel you can also use extensive panel directly from the web service and here final option for type is smart codes and glyph prediction for names in english and the text engine you want to use middle standard is asian all right now here's the image modification options and here's the layer modification options right we'll talk about later here's typing and selection and filter options that have no use as of now because we're just beginning with photoshop here's the view option and here you can define how you want the colors to appear on your document area i can use color blindness option to see it this way i'm just working with working cmyk that's adobe rgb right so here's the gamut warning option here you can see the gray areas that for some things printers cannot produce these colors properly then you have got pixel aspect ratio and that will basically means shape of the pixel either rectangular or square 
basically we use square pixel for images while video files might have a rectangle pixels right then you have got the zoom in zoom out fit and screen actual pixels and view the document on its original print size options then you have got screen mode that's basically the interface view of the interface you have a couple of options you'll see the full menu option with navigation bar and also the standard screen mode or full screen mode without navigation bar you can hit escape or hit f to get back to standard screen mode right then you have got extras over here and this basically allows you to show a layer edges grid lines smart guides slices i select each of them so you can see the grid lines edges and, and the pixels so if you want any of these things not to appear you can simply hit on this and the layer edges will be off the slices let's say smart guides so you can basically hit any option and make all of this appear or you can simply select extras off to hide all of them then you have got rulers and this is the horizontal and vertical rulers over here if you don't see it you can click on view and hit on rulers if you don't want them to appear on your workspace you can simply hit it back and the rulers disappear then you have got snap to option and this basically means whenever you're moving any object dragging any object you can see the magnetic effect on the edge this magnetic effect helps you to align objects easily in relation to other objects for some document and here are a couple of options for that where you want documents to snap to either the document bounds edges layers slices grids and guides since there are no guides and grids over here at the moment these are disabled and you can disable snap like this and you can see now there's no magnetic effect over here you can easily drag it on your own then you have got lock guides if you have got guides basically when you use rulers you can create guidelines to align objects here and let's use snap to again and see how it reacts you can see i can just stop over here and whenever you use guides you can basically select the move tool and drag these guidelines wherever you want and if you lock the guides now you are not allowed to move these guidelines so here so you have got clear guides or generate a new guide or even lock slices we'll talk about slices in later videos all right you can also define which of these panels you want to appear on your workspace let's add history over here and you can see the history appears just click on this and it will hide over here so likewise uh, you can select any of the panels you want on your workspace so basically these are the options you can see in photoshop interface right and with time you'll master all these things but as of now let's go on to create a new file before that let's close all these files now you know how you can open files then let's go and see what you need to know to open new file in photoshop so let's go into the file menu and click on new so once you click on the file menu and a new option you can see this dialog box where you can see the first option name over here you can define the name of your file basically you can define the name of the file from here let's say for sub one and then you have got a preset for definite document sizes over here you can select from any of them or define the width and height of your document from here you can use any of this measurement unit pixels that's the digital measurement unit while inches centimeters and millimeters are measurement units we use in our day-to-day -day life then you have got points because in columns and we'll see the difference of size between these things a bit later let's select any of the preset over here let's say interlace paper and it has got furthermore options over here so there are size option over here a4 b4 and c4 whatever so let's select a5 and you can see the size of here right into the paper a5 and you can see this and whenever you type any measurement unit document size on your own you can see the preset reset to custom then you have got resolution so you need to know about resolution basically resolution defines the amount of details per pixel in an image and this is measured by the number of dots printed in a linear inch the higher the resolution the larger the file size and the detail all right basically while working with digital images the resolution value will be 72 and this will portray the image quite nicely and digital devices and for printing documents we can use resolution from anywhere between 130 to 
to 300 resolutions pixels per inch you can define 300 resolution per inch you have also got the option to get pixels per centimeter and and that will generate more detailed images right and then you have got the color mode to select for in which color mode you want to work on the new document all right so there are five color modes the first one is bitmap and that basically allows you to use one set of black and one set of white color let's have a look at the bitmap image first let's open these three images so you can see here this is an image created using bitmap color mode where you can see only two colors one's black and one's white when you go with the other color mode you can see here's grayscale and this basically allows you to use a 255 color shades of gray and grayscale color mode and you can see in this image this is the image generated with grayscale color mode and you can see the difference between bitmap and grayscale right then the third color mode is rgb color mode and this is the standard color mode for digital devices to portray images and this is the color mode generated using three primary colors red green and blue and this allows you to use around 16 million colors in your artwork Let's Let's see how it works. So this is the color mode RZV and the primary colors are red, green and blue and it can create millions of colors that we regularly see on digital devices. Right? Then the next color mode is CMYK and this is the color mode that is basically used for documents that needs to be printed. So whenever you use CMYK, you can define the resolution to be 300 pixels per inch. And you can see here, this is the CMYK color mode. And this is the color that is generated using cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Then the other color in the color mode is lab color. And this is a bit different than other colors. As you can see here, this is the lab color mode. So basically the other color modes, RGB and CMYK are based on amount of colors mixed to generate a color while lab color mode is based on how humans see color how much color there is on the green to red axis combined with how much color there is on the blue to yellow axis combined with the lightness value from light to dark right so this is how lab color is produced and this is generally not used while creating artworks in photoshop but it's the neutral color mode photoshop uses while converting rgb document to cmyk or cmyk documents to rgb all right then you have got the bit depth option and if you see here you have a couple of options available but with bitmap you can only find one option available here all three are disabled over here then from grayscale onwards you can see a couple of options here so basically bit depth specifies how much color information is available for each pixel in an image the more bits of information per pixel the more available colors and more accurate color representation an image with a bit depth of one has pixels with two possible values that's black and white while an image with a bit depth of eight has possibility of 28 to 256 possible values depending on the color channels they are using so if it's a grayscale possible values would be 256 while in rgb you can see there are three channels and we have 256 possible values for each channel it can generate over 16 million colors then you have got the option for background contents and this is basically the background color either you want your document to be white at the beginning or the color you have selected over here basically this is why as of now if you have worked with the colors in the past with photoshop this can be any color let's make it green so if you selected background color as your background content then you'll see this second color on the color swatch as a document background let's have a look so you can see that right and then you have got transparent option and that basically allows you to keep your document transparent at the beginning so this is the grid that i see this symbolizes the document is transparent and this grid lines won't appear if you print the document all right then another option is color profile we talked about color profile a little earlier in this video right so which color profile you want to use and the standard color profile is srgb or you can also offer adobe rgb or any of this right and the pixel aspect ratio either you want square pixel or rectangular one if you need to define a document size that you need to use again and again while working with photoshop so let's say i need a document with 900 pixel width and 500 pixel height and the color mode rgb resolution 72 background contents maybe white and the color profile and aspect ratio 
wish you remain the same. You don't need to hit it again and again when you need to create another document. You can simply click on save preset and give it a name. Let's say PS tubes and then define whatever you want to save. I'll keep all these values intact and hit an OK. Then the next time you click on the drop down, you can see PS tits over here. It's a simply a little preset. And if you want to delete the preset, you can simply click on delete and that will help you delete the presets. All right. If you're happy with all the specifications, you can simply hit on OK and document is created. Well, that's all for today. We'll talk about the tools and we'll create separate videos for each of these tools one by one. Thanks for watching and subscribe us for more videos. Thank you.